An accounting system should be efficient enough not only to prevent errors from occurring, but also identify mistakes that might have already occurred. Control accounts can help to identify errors in subsidiary ledgers. This video presents everything you need to know about control accounts. Hello and welcome to the accounting feed. My name is Phelan and I'm your host for this session. Let's dive in. Before we delve into the details, let's first begin by defining some important terms. 1. Control account. This is a summarized account in the nominal or general ledger of a business which helps to streamline detailed transactions into a balance. Personal ledger. This is also referred to as a memorandum or a list of balances. It records entries from the books of prime entry and is used to break down the balance in the general ledger or control account into individual customer or supplier balances. Books of prime entry. These are books which are used to record transactions for the first time before entering them into the ledger accounts. For more on books of prime entry, please follow this link. Uses of control accounts. Number one. Control accounts are used to record totals from the books of prime entry. Number two, control accounts are used to check the accuracy of accounting records and this is done by comparing the balances in the accounts with the personal ledgers. Thirdly, control accounts assist in locating errors through reconciliation. Preparing control accounts. This video focuses on two control accounts namely receivables control account and payables control account. The two accounts deal with credit transactions where the main source documents are invoices and credit notes. When payments are made, of course the receipts will be issued. Let's start with the receivables control account. When we sell goods to our customers on credit, we'll issue them with invoices to request for payment. The data from the invoices will then be extracted and recorded in the book of prime entry called Sales Day Book. The figures in this book will be summed up and posted in the general or nominal ledger called Receivables or Sales Ledger Control Account. The individual balances from the Sales Day Book will be posted in the personal ledger. A diagrammatic representation of this process is as follows. It starts from the source document called Sales Invoice and then extracted to the sales day book. Individual balances will go to a personal ledger or memorandum, while the totals will go to the general or nominal ledger. The general ledger or nominal ledger in this case is called receivables control account, while the personal ledger on the other hand is called receivables or sales ledger. Notice that the general ledger is part of the double entry, while the personal ledger is not part of the double entry. Also, the general ledger uses totals from the sales day book, while the personal ledger uses individual balances from the sales day book. Receivables control account looks like this. Remember receivables is an asset, so the balance brought down is on the debit side. Anything that increases this balance will appear on the debit side as well, and these include sales made on credit, refund to customers, dishonor checks, penalties for late payments. All of them, as you can see, I have them entered on the debit side. But those items that will decrease this balance will appear on the credit side. What are these? Receipts from credit customers. As you can see there, I have it as bank. Sales returns. Of course, we'll have to issue credit notes because of the sales returns. So that is why I have credit notes in parentheses. The recoverable debt written off as well is on the credit side. This is that part of receivables that we've confirmed for sure that we cannot recover again. Maybe because of disputes, maybe because of the bankruptcy or financial difficulties of our customer. Control with payables as well is on the credit side. Just to elaborate on this as we go along is that it can happen that your customer is also your supplier. So if you owe them and they owe you, you might as well cancel part of that debt or even all of it using your receivables. So you're supposed to pay them a particular amount, let's say $10,000, and they're supposed to pay you $8,000. So why pay them $10,000 and then they pay you $8,000 in a separate transaction? You might as well just pay them $2,000. So what you've done there is that you've used the amount that they owe you to cancel what you owe them. 
and then now you remain with the balance only. We also have discount allowed on the credit side. And this is specifically the settlement or cash discount. If you take the difference between the totals on your debit side and the totals on your credit side, what you get is a balance to be carried forward to the following year. Moving on to payables control account. When we buy goods from our suppliers on credit, they'll issue us with invoices to request for payment. The data from these invoices will then be extracted and recorded in the books of prime entry and the book of prime entry in this specific case is purchases day book. The figures in this book will be summed up and posted in the general or nominal ledger called payables or purchase ledger control account. The individual balances from the purchases day book will be posted in the personal ledger. The diagrammatic representation of this is as follows. So it starts with a source document called purchases invoice and the data there extracted into the purchases day book. The totals in the purchases day book will go to the general ledger and this general ledger is called payables control account. It is part of the double entry and it uses totals from the purchases day book as you can see. On the other side, individual balances will be posted in the personal ledger or memorandum. And this is called payables ledger or purchases ledger. This is not part of the double entry and it uses individual balances from the purchases table. Payables control account will look like this. Payables is a liability, so balance pro down should be on the credit side. Anything that increases this balance will also appear on the credit side. Some of the things we are looking at there are purchases on credit, refunds from suppliers, penalties for late payments. All these appearing on the credit side as you can see posted with XX representing the space to put your figures. On the debit side will be any transaction that will reduce those balances. One of them will be payments to credit suppliers and as you can see there I have it as a bank. Purchase returns as well. Of course, we'll receive credit notes to cancel the invoices that we had received on these goods that we are returning back. Contra with receivables, just as I explained earlier. Cash discount received from our suppliers as well reduces the balance and that is why it is on the debit side. So at this point, if you sum up the figures you have on the credit side and you deduct the totals on the debit side, you end up with a balance to be carried forward to the following year. Control account reconciliation. Since the figures in the personal ledger and in the control account are obtained from the same source document, the two should agree. This is however not always the case due to errors and omissions. A reconciliation therefore should be performed between the personal ledger and the control account. Reconciliation of individual balances with control account balance will be done as follows. We can start with the balance from the personal ledger and we make adjustments for all errors made in the personal ledger. So what we end up with there will be the revised total which should agree with the control account balance. You can as well as an alternative start with the balance as per the control account and then you make adjustments for all errors made in the control account. This will give you the totals extracted from the personal ledger. This marks the end of our session today. Thank you for watching. If you are interested in accounting and finance topics, make sure you subscribe to this channel, The Accounting Feed. If you have any questions on this topic or any other area you'd like us to make a video on, please post it in the comment section below. Feel free to share this video and channel with anyone you know might be interested in this type of content. Do not be stingy. Until the next one, cheers.